John Osteen. For more than 50 years, John Osteen has been making a difference in people's lives, showing the world that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Founder and pastor of Lakewood Church, John Osteen has dedicated his life to reaching the unreached and telling the untold. In America, reaching out to the poor, winning the lost, and changing lives on the street, on the job, and even in prison. Overseas, taking the power of the gospel to places that have never heard the name of Jesus Christ. Join us at Lakewood Church, the oasis of love in a troubled world. A church with a worldwide vision, reaching the lost here in the United States, and dedicated to taking the gospel to the nations of the earth, to preach, teach, and heal, just as Jesus did. Today, your life can be changed as God's Word comes alive in you. Don't miss the next 30 minutes with your host, Pastor John Osteen. The Bible says, It is not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And I do welcome you again as we open the Word of God. I want you to give them a good amen. Amen. Go to share with the people. Well, I was thinking this morning, we had four or five men who had just been released from prison that came, and we were so glad to have them. And I thought of this scripture, and it's in the Living Bible in Psalm 32, and it, it would apply to them so much, but it applies to all of us because all of us have sinned. What happiness for those whose guilt has been forgiven. What joys when sins are covered over. What relief for those who have confessed their sins and God has cleared their records. God clears your record no Amen. matter what you have done. If you come to Him with a repentant heart and ask Him, Jesus will clear your record and He'll erase them and He won't ever remember them again. Now that's good news. No matter what you've done in life, if you're guilty, you need mercy. And Jesus is the one to give you mercy. So try it. It works. Amen. And everybody said amen. amen. And everybody said hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's hold up our Bibles and make our confession. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated and open your Bibles, please. And I say this to the television audience also, to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. I'm preaching to you here in Lakewood Church and to the, the television audience the fourth message on touching eternity, knowing and understanding God. You know that little jingle says, reach out, reach out, and touch somebody. But well, we say, reach out, reach out, and touch God. And our master scripture is in Daniel 11:32. the people who do know their God. The people who do know their God. We're talking about knowing our God. There are all kinds of strange gods that people worship. They worship a God that delights in sending cancer and AIDS and storms and sudden death and tragedies. And they, blame, they say, that, that's what my God does. Well, that isn't the God I worship. There are people who believe in God, a God that, uh, that allows, that says, I'm going to destroy your home and I'm going to keep you poor and in poverty. They worship that kind of a God. That is not my God. The people who do know their God, if you know some kind of a strange God like that, you will not be strong. You'll be weak and fearful. The Bible says the people 
who do know their God shall be strong and do mighty exploits. So if you're strong and doing mighty exploits, it's because you know you have a good God, a healing God, a delivering God, a saving God, a God of the impossible. Amen. How important it is to know who God is. You don't get to know God by looking at the sun and the moon and the stars and the mountains and the valleys and the flowers. You know about God that way, but the way you know God is to get into the Word of God and hear what God says about Himself. Amen. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. See, there is a weakness co that comes over you, and there is destruction that comes if you don't know who your God is. And some people worship a denominationalized God, and they think He's a He's a Baptist or a Presbyterian or an Episcopalian or a Church of Christ or a Charismatic or a Pentecostal. No, God is, didn't belong, doesn't belong to your denomination. No, God, God is bigger than greater than all our denominations. God is the God of all flesh. He doesn't see us as denominationalized people. He sees us as his family. The Bible says in 2 Peter, grace and peace are multiplied unto you through the knowledge. Through the knowledge. Through the knowledge. See, there's more than a hoop and a holler and a jump and a shout. We need to sit down and get knowledge. Peace and grace are multiplied, not added, multiplied through the knowledge of our, the Lord Jesus Christ and our God. The more you know about God, the more peace you have. Now, who is this God? We're talking about knowing God. I'm going to give you three scriptures today, uh, and uh, we read one of them there, that God tells you who He is. I don't care what somebody tells you or what experience tells you, don't believe anything but the Word of God. It says here, Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, He is the Father, the supernatural Father of Jesus who was born of the Virgin Mary who came into the world to bear the sins of the world and the sicknesses of the world and the curse of the world and to die the ignominious death of the cross. He took the judgment of the human race upon Himself and raised Him, and God raised Him from the dead. He is the only way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by Him. God says, I am the Father of that Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of what? Mercies. What we need is not justice. We need mercy. I think of the thousands that sit here this morning, and I think of the multiplied hundreds of thousands uh, uh, that view this telecast around the world. Oh, it's so good to come through that camera and tell you that God not only has mercy, He's the Father of mercies. He's the Father of mercies. When I think of His mercy upon my own life, walking in darkness, not heeding His call again and again and again, rebelling in my heart, going the way of the world, the flesh, and the devil. And yet the tender voice of God kept dealing with my heart and dealing with my heart. Dropping out of high school, selling popcorn in the ISIS theater in North Fort Worth, I was lost and undone without God. I loved to tell the story. He had touched my heart many times, but I would not listen. He tried to get my attention, and I would not listen. But one night, coming home from a nightclub at 2 o'clock in the morning, alone, walking across South Fort Worth, having drained all of the pleasures of the world and still with an empty heart, and rebelling against God, not listening to Him, oh! Oh, the mercy of God. I could have died and gone to hell, but in His mercy, He came again and walked by my side and knocked at my heart's door and showed His mercy. Thank God I listened that time and I passed out of darkness into His marvelous light. Oh, the mercy of God. The mercy of God. 
You know, he's talking to these Corinthians here. Uh, you know, if you'll check back in chapter 6 of the first, uh, first book of Corinthians, you'll find some things here, and you'll understand why he calls him the Father of Mercies. Corinth was a very licentious and wicked place. I mean, it was where the devil held, held high carnival. Notice the kind of people that filled the Corinthian church. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate or homosexuals, abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now that's a, that's a hard statement, but it is true. But that isn't what I read that for, to condemn people and make them feel bad. The next verse is the greatest news you could ever hear. Talk about the Father of mercies. That whole church was made up of people like that. And he says in verse 11, And such were some of you. Hallelujah. And such were some of you. And such are some of you today. But I've got good news for you. I don't care what you're in. You can get out of it in the name of Jesus through the Father of mercies. And such were some of you. But you are, notice, washed. You are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. That's the good news that we have. Oh, all the wickedness of the world. It was filled in the church at Corinth. But Paul said he is the father of mercies. And he takes people in their filthiness. And the first thing he does is washes them. Say, thank God I'm washed. Say, thank God I'm washed. He washes us from our past. Thank God I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Where can you find cleansing for your sin? What can wash away that adultery? What can wash away that fornication? What will wash away that, that uh, wrong kind of living that you had and that, that deviant uh, personality that you've got? What can wash away the sins that weigh upon your heart? The blood of Jesus Christ. He doesn't just cover us. He washes them away. And God said, their sins and iniquities I will remember no more forever. First of all, he takes the, the, those people and washes them. And then the Bible says, sanctifies them. That is, he sets them apart and says, you're set apart from the world. You, you're going to be my vessel. You're going to be mine. And then not only so, lest the devil come around, he's going to make you righteous and justify you. See, that's the mercy of God. Not only are you washed from your sins, not only are you set aside as God's special property, God makes you righteous and gives you a heart that wants to do his will. He's the father of mercies. He's the Father. You say, what, what, what kind of a God is it that you believe in, Brother Osteen? I believe he's the Father of mercies. I believe he'll never give up on your case. I believe he'll show mercy to every person who will cry out to him. Notice it says he is the Father of mercies, the God of our, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation. That we may be able, say, I am able. Amen. That we may able, be able to comfort those in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. God is a great big comforter. And the Bible says, in any trouble that you're in, if you'll just turn to me, I will comfort you. I will give you grace. I will give you the power to endure what you're uh, enduring and, and the ability to chase the devil off. And when you get through with it, you will be able to comfort anybody in any trouble by the same comfort God gave you. 
He is the God of all comfort. I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 tells us what kind of a God that we have. In verse 20, now the God of peace. Not only the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, He is the God of peace. Peace cannot be bought. Peace cannot be earned. Sometimes we who have been saved a long time forget what it means to walk without God in a world that's lost. Oh, God says, the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose ways cast up dirt and mire. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. But thank God the wicked can turn to the God of peace and he can find peace. He can find peace. The peace, that peace between you and God. God is the God of peace. He can, he can still the troubled waters of your spirit. He can tr still the troubled storms in your life. Oh, you can lie down at night knowing that you're at peace between you and God. Amen. That everything is all right between you and God. The God of peace. Now notice what this God of peace does. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ. See, in order to give us peace, God brought Jesus out of the grave after he suffered for our sins. This God of peace, what kind of a God is he? He brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, people all over the world say, well, I worship this God. I worship this God. We all worship the same God. No, we don't. No, we do not worship your God. The God we worship is the Father of Jesus, and he raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Away with this idea we worship the same God when you don't believe Jesus is the Son of God and you don't believe he died for our sins and you don't believe there's salvation in, in, in any other name and you don't believe that he is alive, the only Lord of heaven and earth. No, the God we serve is the one that brought him out of that grave. And the, the God we serve is going to bring us out of our grave. Ain't no grave going to hold my body down. Amen. This is our God. You need to reach out and touch eternity. Know God and be strong. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. Jesus is that great shepherd of the sheep. And God did it through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And because of that, he will perfect you or mature you in every good work to do his will, working in you. This God will work in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and he'll do it through the Lord Jesus Christ. Men would give millions of dollars to have peace today. People seek it in drugs and alcohol and illicit living. They travel the world over trying to find peace. But you see, peace is found in the God of peace. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ took all your sins. He'll wash you. He'll cleanse you. He'll set you apart. He'll justify or make you righteous. And he'll give you a new heart. And you will have peace. Peace with God and the peace of God. Amen. You know, it's wonderful to know that all is well between you and God. God is not mad at the human race. Oh, you say, I found a scripture in the Old Testament. God is angry with the wicked every day. Yeah, but since Jesus came and put away our sins, God ain't mad anymore. God has reconciled the world to himself. He's already put away your sins. All you have to do is to know your God and accept his son Jesus, and you will experience that wonderful thing that we call salvation. Can I have an amen? I want you to turn to another scripture. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, this tells us what kind of a God you have. But the God of all grace. You see, no man will ever, no woman will ever be saved by their works. 
You know, it's so strange. You could go and take a microphone and a, and a camera up and down the street and say, would you tell me how to be saved? Would you tell me? I want to know how to be saved. You'd get strange answers. You'd, you'd get answers like this. Well, just live a good life. And then some would say to you, uh, just live by the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And others would say, well, just don't do this and don't do that and don't do the other and you'll be saved. Live a good life. And all of those things may be good, but you never get saved that way. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians, but by grace you are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And listen to these words, not of works, not of works, not of works lest anybody should boast. I'll tell you, if it hadn't been written there, some of us would finally make it into heaven and just throw out our chest and say, thank God I made it. Thank God I worked enough. I did enough good, and God let me in. Look at me. I'm somebody special. But you will, nobody will, no, no flesh shall glory in his presence. When we get to heaven, we'll not be talking about ourselves. We'll be praising the, the God who saved us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the God of grace, the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Now you think about this. You think about this. You talk about mercy and comfort and, and grace. The God of grace is the one that calls you, calls you. He's the one that sends the Holy Ghost to, to touch your heart and try to get you tender before him. He's the one that, that causes people to come by and witness to you about Jesus. He's the one that causes you to tune in to television programs like this. It's God reaching out for you. The God of all grace who called us. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, but he's calling us unto his eternal glory. Think about heaven. Think about the streets of gold. Think about a place where there's no sickness, sorrow, crying, or dying, no pain, and no death. The glory of God forever and forever. God is calling you to his eternal glory. Oh, what grace and what mercy. He could have turned his back on the human race. He could have said, I'm through with them forever. He could have reached down to fallen angels and helped them and saved them. But he didn't reach for fallen angels. He reached for fallen people. Amen. The God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have endured some persecution for a while, here's what he'll do for you. He'll mature you. He'll establish you. He'll strengthen you. And he'll settle you. That's the kind of God that you have available to you. And he's available to everybody. He's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. He's the God of peace. And he's the God of comfort. And he is the God of all grace. You have a good God. Don't let the devil distort him. Don't let the devil make him look ugly to you. He's not a denominationalized God that goes by your denomination's, denominational rules. He is God who is a God of love. He's on your side. I believe today you're going to shake yourself and get free of all of the false ideas the devil's put in your mind that God doesn't love you, God won't save you, God won't forgive you, God doesn't want to have anything to do with you. I believe you're going to see the God you really have, and I believe you're going to rise and come to him, love him, and serve him all the days of your life. Marriage is worth saving. Come to Lakewood Church and we'll show you how.